so many things we do just in our everyday lives that that, uh, that harm the environment and stuff. It's kind of nice when you can, you know, give back to the environment. It feels like kind of evening it out. When you're all done, you look at like all you've planted. You've helped to make something, you know, that's gonna be there for a while. It's gonna really help the environment and the community. I think there's so much going on that's breaking down the riparian zones and our and our streams and stuff. I think it's really cool because when the the banks are revegetated, it helps the environment out a lot. I mean, the salmon in particular. The more trees there are, then the more shade there is, and that's a major component, is to have enough shade. All the life in the stream is affected by erosion, not just salmon. This video is about helping you with your streamside restoration project. A successful project will provide healthy habitat for fish and wildlife. Your part in this is knowing how to plant right. There is nothing you can do to guarantee that every plant you put in the ground is going to survive. Unfortunately, there are things beyond your control, like a bad summer drought or a deer eating your plant that you can't do anything about. However, using good planting techniques are going to give the plant its best possible chance of survival. Here we have a Douglas fir that unfortunately did not make it. And in this case, its untimely death might have been avoided if the plant had been put in a little bit higher. You're going to be following a planting plan that is trying to mimic the natural conditions for your area. For example, in this degraded area, we might plant willows and other water-loving species close to the stream edge. Further up, we could plant salmonberry and swamp rose, which prefer moderately wet soil. Higher yet on the bank, we'd plant maple and cottonwood, which can tolerate periods of drought. Looking at a natural area, you see that plants with similar needs grow together in zones of the conditions that they prefer. Close to the stream, you find water-loving plants such as willows, red alder, and salmonberry, and a little higher, big leaf maple and western red cedar. Higher still, there are plants such as Douglas fir and sword fern, which like fairly dry conditions. There are basically three kinds of plant stock that you could encounter on a planting project. The first is bare root, and that's either going to be a salvage plant, and you can see that when this plant was dug up, the soil did not hold on to around the roots or it's going to be a, a nursery grown bare root plant which is grown in a big bed and then um, dug up and without the soil. Second is going to be a containerized plant um, and they're going to be either in a pot or some kind of cell and you can see that when you take the pot off um, that the roots are going to hold on to the soil if it's well grown um, and it creates a nice root ball which is easy to handle. Third, and this only works for some species, you can make cuttings or live stakes. Uh, and these are live branches uh, from trees or shrubs. And they don't look like much now, but if you <laughs> pound them into the ground and conditions are right, then these sticks will grow roots. In all, for all kinds of plant material, you need to make sure that the root system is kept nice and moist up to the time of planting. With a bare root stock, this means covering the roots with wood chips or sawdust or soil and uh, making sure that that's nice and watered and moist up until the time of planting. With the containers, you just water right into the container. Uh, and a good way to see if it's wet is to pick it up and feel whether or not it's heavy. With the live stakes, the easiest thing to do is to put the ends into a bucket of water or into the stream. Here we are, ready to plant. We've picked out our spot, and the first step is to remove anything, any material that's in our way. So I just want to dig this away? Yep. And then start digging your hole. So am I just basically digging the hole, or am I taking the grass off? It definitely helps to take the grass off first. You can kind of cut a circle, like a cookie cutter, and then get that out of your way. Would you like me to get all these roots and grass out of here? Yes, please. The grass roots, if you leave them in the hole or put them back, they um, can cause problems for the plant. So go ahead and dig out a little bit more. Okay, so don't go too deep. You actually want to concentrate more on making the hole wide than making it deep. And now we're at the point where you want to just put the plant in the hole and see what the fit is like. We'll spread these roots out. Okay, now what we see when we put the plant in the hole is that it's really quite a bit too deep. We want the level of the soil to be even 
with the ground level adjacent to it. So I'm going to fill it in back somewhat, trying not to put any grass in. Okay, that looks more even. Um, and with the width, it only needs to be wide enough to contain the spread roots. Having it too wide is no problem, but you definitely do not want to cram the roots into a narrow hole. If the hole is too small, bent roots will continue to grow in the direction that they are pointed. As this picture shows, after a year the roots are beginning to grow upward and inward instead of out into the surrounding soil. These bent roots will have trouble finding the nutrients and water that the plant needs and may not anchor the plant against strong winds. So now we're ready to backfill. Okay. For some reason, there is never enough soil. That's Even, why the bucket of dirt? Yeah, that's why the bucket of dirt. This extra soil came from a hole that we dug nearby on the site. As we're filling in, you can see we're pressing the soil into the hole. We're filling in all the air pockets, making sure we have good firm contact between the plant and the surrounding soil. And you can see we didn't put any sticks or rocks or grass roots in the hole, just the soil. One of the last steps is to make a berm that will hold water. Let's see if we can get any more out of this. That looks great. We're ready to water in. Would you do the honors? Yeah. It's pretty full. Watch out. And you want to completely fill the basin to the top. You want to just soak this plant. That looks great. This final stage of watering, not only does it give the plant the water it needs, but it, it helps to um, push the soil down and take out any air pockets. When you're working with container grown stock, the main thing you need to look out for is plants that are root bound. That means that when you pull off the pot, you're looking at lots of circling roots. Now these roots are not going to fix themselves. They're going to continue to grow in their position and expand in position, and they could eventually expand to strangle this plant, which is obviously not good. Also, these roots, as they are, they're not reaching for the nutrients and the moisture that the plant needs to be healthy. So what you need to do is break these roots up. You need to straighten them and get the kinks out, spread them out, and cut them. Especially where they're growing up on the sides, you need to break those circles up. I know that it is stressful to cut plant roots, and most people have problems with it, but I promise that in all but the most sensitive plants, this actually encourages the roots to start growing again. And of course, you need to break up those roots. Now we're gonna plant a bare root plant. So first, like with the others, we wanna put in the hole and see if it fits. And definitely spread out the roots and hold it up at the level that it's going to be. And this does look a little cramped at the sides. So let's take another bite out of this hole. That looks great. Let's check it again. Yeah, we got a little bit more space here. Um, but now the trick is bringing the plant up to the right level. How do um, you do that? Well, yeah, it's funny with bare root plants because you don't have the soil level to guide you. And instead what you want to do is use um, the level that either the level that was grown in the field, if you can see that, sometimes there'll be a dirt line or a wet line. Here's the stem and it's light brown and then it turns dark brown and that's the root collar where it's turned into root tissue. Um, so that's what you want to line up with the surrounding soil. And for bare root plants, you want to make a little mound so that you can spread these roots out. So let's make a mound at the bottom of the hole. That's probably good. Spread the roots out. That's looking pretty nice. And the level, does that look good to you? Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, great, let's fill it in. Okay, so now we can water it in. And after you water it in, if it looks like you need to add more soil, it is a fine time to do that. 
because of course the soil settles when you water it. Planting willow stakes first and very important is making sure you have the right end up. These are not going to work if you plant them upside down. So the first thing to check is that if it was cut right, they're going to be a slanted cut at the bottom and that's so it's easy to drive into the soil. At the top end, you're going to have a flat cut and that's so that if you need to pound it into the soil, you have a surface to pound on. If you're not sure of the cuts or if you just want to double check, you can look at the buds. And on willows, the buds, they have a slight tendency to be pointing up. Uh, it's might, it might not be obvious at first, but it's something you can develop an eye for once you look at a few of them. Once you know which way is up, you want to put it into the ground um, and make sure that you get at least half the stake into the soil. Even better is a little bit more. Uh, you don't want to go all the way. You do want to leave some buds exposed at the top. But keep in mind that everything below the soil is going to turn into roots. All of these points are going to sprout roots if it's good conditions. And at the top, they're going to sprout into leaves and branches. And then you'll have a tree. So the easiest way to plant stakes is to use a planting bar to punch the hole for you. This is really nice soil here. Then you try not to lose your hole and push the stake in as far as it'll go. And then it's nice to give it a few taps with a hammer to get it in a bit deeper, get more buds underground, and to make sure it has good contact with the soil. Your last step can be checking, pushing the soil together at the top because the buds underground will not sprout as well if they don't have good contact with the soil. As a last step, you can drive a hole right next to it to push the soil around the planting. A great thing to do for the plant is to cover up its roots either with some kind of weed barrier, which is what we're going to do, or use some sort of material as a mulch, wood chips or beauty bark, something like that. And that uh, keeps the weeds back and it also holds in the moisture, which is great for the plant. So of course, as we're feeding the plant through the hole in the weed barrier, we're being as careful as we can with the leaves and the branches so we don't break or hurt the plant. Also keep in mind that weed barriers such as this one are designed to have a certain side up. This is so that while they're blocking the weeds growing from below, that they are allowing rain to come in from the top. And then you staple this down. Staples are right next to you, Dennis. And then we need to put some right around the center. Safety is also important when working outdoors. Make sure that when you're done with your shovel, you either drive it into the ground or place the point downwards. When you're done with your rake, you should always place the tines downwards. And when you're done with your pruners, you should always lock them. Whenever you're doing any sort of plant restoration, it's important to respect the area in which you're working. There are a few points that you might want to remember. First, keep dogs and people out of the stream and off of the stream bank. Their presence there can cause erosion. Also, if you're working along a shoulder of a road, it's important to keep yourself safe. Be aware of the cars that may be in that area. Here we have a site that was restored two years ago. We provided some basic maintenance, such as watering every two to three weeks during the dry periods. The mulch we used prevented new plants from drying out. We removed high grasses and weeds in the late spring and early fall, and we occasionally checked for rodent and deer damage. We were also sure to keep livestock, people, and pets out of the area. Now to review the most important points. Your hole should be deep and wide enough to accommodate the spread roots, but not too deep. The soil level of the plant should match the soil level outside the hole. Make sure that the sides of the hole are rough and that you refill the hole with soil from that site. Form a basin outside of the planted hole to help catch water. Also remember special considerations that go along with the different types of plant stock. For bare root plants, be sure to fully spread the roots in the planting hole. For plants from containers, spread the roots and also cut any that are circling. 
And for cuttings, make sure you know which way is up. I went back to one site and it was really cool to see the, how all the willows we'd planted had really taken off. It gives you a good sense of like, accomplishment when you see something that um, is going to grow and is going to become bigger and stronger and help the environment even more as every day and every month and every year goes by. And it was really cool to see how everything just has grown up and our work didn't, it wasn't just in vain, it, it actually meant something and we actually helped the stream. As you grow up you can watch that tree grow um, and watch the, that area become healthier. It's just such an enriching um, part of my life, uh, anybody's life who does revegetation. The bottom line, it's really fun to do. Um, it's really great to give back to the environment. All the space that we cleared of invasives and all the, all the new trees we planted improved it so much with, um, with trees and plants that are supposed to be there. It, looking back on it, it was like something I couldn't do alone and that um, no one person could do all on their own. But together, each of us putting in our part, it was something really beautiful and really amazing to see that we made a huge difference and that it would be there for a long time.